Thank you, General. Let me, before I begin, thank the participants in our roundtable today. Two mayors, three mayors, chiefs of police, attorneys general, and community organizers uh, are doing significant work in bringing down violent crime in their communities. There is no uh, one, uh, one answer fits everything. And it's about being engaged and multiple organizations being engaged. So I want to thank you for the time you spent with us today. <clears throat> and I warned you, I'm coming back at you again for more information. <clears throat> and uh, we just met, as I said, with a bipartisan group of, uh, of mayors, law enforcement, and community leaders. And we discussed a, a comprehensive strategy that I'm releasing today to uh, combat the epidemic of gun violence and other violent crime that we've been seeing in our country for far too long that has spiked since the start of the pandemic over a year ago. Crime is historically rises during the summer. And as we emerge from this pandemic, with the country opening back up again, the traditional summer, summer spike may even be more pronounced than it usually would be. For folks at home, here's what you need to know. I've been at this a long time, and there are things we know that work that reduce gun violence and violent crime, and things that we don't know about. But things we know about, background checks for purchasing a firearm are important. Ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. No one needs to have a weapon that can fire over 30, 40, 50, even up to 100 rounds, unless you think the deer are wearing Kevlar vests or something. Community policing and programs that keep neighborhoods safe and keep folks out of trouble. These efforts work. They save lives. But over time, these policies were gutted and woefully underfunded. In our conversation today, we talked about our strategy to supercharge what works while we continue to push the Congress to act on sensible gun violence legislation. First, we discussed cracking down, as you heard from the Attorney General, on rogue gun dealers. We know that if there is a strict enforcement of background checks, then fewer guns get into the hands of criminals. Background checks have thus far kept more than 3 million guns out of the hands of felons, convicted felons, fugitive, domestic abusers, and others prohibited from being able to purchase a gun. And there's still too many loopholes in that system. And today, Enough rogue gun dealers feel like they, they can get away with selling guns to people who aren't legally allowed to own them. And I might add, the Second Amendment from the day it was passed limited the type of people who could own a gun and what type of weapon you could own. You couldn't buy a cannon. Those who say the blood of the, the blood of patriots, you know, and all the stuff about how we're going to have to move against the government. Well, the Tree of Liberty is not water with the blood of patriots. What's happened is, that there have never been, if you want to think you need to have weapons to take on the government, you need F-15s and maybe some nuclear weapons. The point is that there's always been the ability to limit, rationally limit, the type of weapon that can be owned and who can own it. The last time we had data on this issue of uh, who was purchasing guns was more than 20 years ago. 5% of gun dealers, turns out, in the study we did, showed that 90% of illegal guns were found at the crime scenes sold by 5% of gun dealers. 5% sold 90% of the guns found at crime scenes. Mm -hmm.